I was sort of the unenviable task of following a comedian. I don't know why they chose to uh, pick a mathematician to follow a comedian, but <laughs> I will do my best. Uh, I'm Nick Bonadio. I'm the CEO and founder of NumberFire. NumberFire is the next generation sports analytics platform. I've learned to uh, memorize that because I've given a lot of startups pitches, so I'm just so used to saying that it just flows out of my head. Now, the pitch I'm giving is called Consumer Moneyball. Now, some of you may be familiar with the movie Moneyball. It's about the story of how a small market baseball team used data and smarter decisions to sort of level the playing field in baseball, an unfair playing field for small market teams. You may notice a very strong similarity between me and Brad Pitt. We're very similar people. But uh, you know, the movie Moneyball focused on how professional teams use data analytics. I'm more concerned with how consumers, regular sports fans, use analytics. And they may ask why. Well, a lot of people in this room may play in survivor pools or March Madness pools or play fantasy football. And that's a very large market. I'll get through the business stuff first because it's kind of boring. There's 30 million people who play fantasy football in America. That's America alone. They spend on average nine hours a week and $150 per year. That's an astronomical market and that's just fantasy football. In terms of data, they spend 150 million page views per month in the top five sports sites. There's an astronomical interest in sports, but the average person doesn't have access to the same kind of information that these professional leagues have. Now, one use case that people would love to use data for is survivor pools. Survivor pools are a way for the average fan to sort of get into the game and pick over the course of an NFL season which teams are going to win over the course of the 17-game season. Now, if you wanted to play in a survivor pool and you wanted to figure out, OK, who do I pick in my pool this week? You might go to ESPN and say, all right, ESPN, tell me who the best teams are. Now, let's look at this. You might say, all right, Washington. They gave up 464 yards last week. Now, the average person might say, well, 464, I mean, they must stink. They must be the worst team in the league. But the, everyone in this room, you're all data people, you're all math people, you know that 464 is relatively flawed. They played the New England or the uh, New Orleans Saints, the most strongest, the best offense in the league. They're also behind the whole game. And so the 464 is actually a very misleading number. It doesn't tell into account any of the factors in the game. It's an end, but it doesn't tell anything about the means to that end. Now, if you want to really look at what actually happened in that game, we've got to apply some sexy math time. Now, the first concept that we use is a concept called Markov chains. Markov chains are a finite a set of independent events. In sports, it's, it's nothing but Markov chains. A drive in football is a Markov chain. A possession in basketball is a Markov chain. These are independent events. Player A passed to player B. Player C dunked it. These are events in a chain, a Markov chain. And now, once you have a Markov chain, you break down the plays into these chains. You look at a concept called expectation. Now, if you've got first and goal on the one yard line for a football team, your expectation of points may be five, five and a half, because you're going to score a touchdown most of the time. But if you got sacked and went back to the 10, your expectation probably dropped to like four. And if you get an understanding of the play by play of how different plays in this Markov chain affected the expectation, you've got a much stronger sense of how good a team really is makes that 464 seem pretty meaningless. So if you're looking at this, again, going back to our example with the, the, uh, the Redskins, you'll see, OK, well, the Redskins, in terms of conventional statistics, are last. And again, 464, they're last. But if you dig into it, you would see that their actual rush efficiency was number 10 in the league. They saved 0.11 points per rushing play against the average team. This means that every time the Saints rushed against the Redskins, they actually lost 0.11 shares of points against an average team in the same situation. Now, their pass defense was a little more in the middle. They actually gave up 0.4 points more than the average team. This kind of conclusively shows that even though the 464 says they were the worst, they actually weren't the worst. They were number 10 and number 17. And so if you really want to know about how the Redskins compare against other teams, we have all these advanced statistics we just calculated through our Markov chains. What we can do is look into history and, and show me all the teams which have similar metrics to the Washington Redskins. It turns out we've got a very similar match. The 2002 Kansas City Chiefs are a 96.33% similar team to the Washington Redskins. This means in similar situations, the Chiefs performed very, very similarly to how the Redskins performed in week one. And so if I wanted to know next week, are the Redskins going to beat their arch rival St. Louis Rams, I have this metrics, or this big matrix of all the times a team similar played 
or teams similar to Washington played a team similar to the Rams, and I can extrapolate all kinds of cool information based on how the similar teams did. And they're weighted based on how accurate a match they are, and it gives me a really strong idea of what's gonna happen in the next game. And so, translate that back to my survivor pool, now I've got this giant matrix of win expectations for all these different teams. And so if I wanted to move forward and say, all right, well, it's week two, who do I want in my survivor pool? Maybe I'll take New England, because they're in 86% win expectation versus everyone else. And once I have this giant matrix, I actually do a bunch of cool different things like different algorithms for traversing that matrix. One might be based on just the highest number. One maybe find the highest number and move backwards to ensure that I have a unique team for each week and so on. And that is what my company does. I'm Nick from Numberfire. We do sports analytics. Come talk to me afterwards. Thank you. <laughs>